Hi, this is Mary from Open Helix with this week's Tip of the Week. If you're seeing this tip someplace else, please be sure to come back by our blog for additional details. I'll provide links to the resources I'm talking about today, links to publications, and so on. So check us out at blog.openhelix.com. For today's tip, I'm going to highlight a new feature of the UCSC Genome Browser that's become available. This is called the Genome Browser in a Box. And right now, if you go over to their homepage today, you can learn about it from their homepage, but there's other ways. You can always check the news archives later if it's, it's later when you come across this video. There may be times where you need to keep your data on your own computer and not share that publicly in any way at this time. Or you may have giant files that you, you just can't upload right now to the public servers and, and work with them there. You can use the Genome Browser in a box to save all this material right to your own computer and work with it there. The Genome Browser in a Box offers a, a bunch of different options for you to work with your files locally. And it doesn't require you to get the Bioinformatics Geeks to set up a local installation of the UCSC Genome Browser. You can run this all yourself on your own computer. And there's a couple ways you can learn more about it. As I said, right here on the news page at um, UCSC, you can learn more about it. They've got a blog post. I would encourage you to read more details about that at their blog. There's also documentation on their site, of course. So if you're going to want to install the Genome Browser in a box, which I'll talk more about in detail in a minute, I'll just mention that you go to the online store here. You would then be able to purchase or obtain the UCSC Genome Browser in a box. You can learn about the system requirements here. I have a kind of an old computer and I was able to run all this perfectly fine. Then you put it into your cart. Once you get it into your cart, you'll see that although it does have pricing, once you proceed to checkout, well, you have to create a registration here. Once you proceed to checkout, though, you can say whether you are using it as a fee-based user or if you're going to be not using this for commercial use, you can down then download this. You agree to the terms, and then you can start to download this. When I downloaded this when I was testing it for the UCSC team, it took me a couple of hours to do that, so be prepared. You're going to want to set that up, set the download running, and have some time. It's not going to come down right away. So keep that in mind. It might take you a while to download that. Once you have it, though, you can set it up with the virtual box, you can set up the UCSC software, and you can be running. And I'll talk more about that after I've downloaded it. The last one I had was a testing version. So I'm going to download this one myself, and then I'll be back with you to talk more about the features of the Genome Browser in a Box. So with this slide, I just wanted to illustrate that I have downloaded my Genome Browser in a Box, and I have downloaded my virtual box, and I'm ready to install. At this point, I would encourage you to turn to the documentation for help. There are some key aspects here of the unpacking and the installation that are well documented and you should be reading the documentation to work your way through that. All right, so if you have downloaded the software that you need, you've agreed to the license terms and all, then the next thing you need to do is access the details on how to get started. And the best place to learn more about how to install and to use the Genome Browser in a Box is the help documentation that's available here. You can find this link from a couple of places right on the store page, click that link to access the details from the documentation page here. And so there are really key points here that you need to know. Set up details about accessing the virtual box and all this. Another thing that's really key, the extraction is challenging and it might not work with the software that you have. In fact, I had to download one of these additional ones because of the heavy lifting that was required to install this. It didn't work with the unzip tool that I had. That's key, and there's a bunch of other features that you need to know about how to get started with VirtualBox, how to set this up and run this, and a lot of other helpful getting started tips on this page. So be sure to find your way to the Genome Browser in a Box user guide to help you through the early setup. Once you have downloaded the pieces you need, you have extracted everything, you shall be ready to run the VirtualBox. Now, one of the ways you can do that is accessing the VirtualBox software, or you can click the browser box icon that's available in your newly unpacked folder. All right, so here is my VirtualBox manager. It has found the browser box. It's currently powered off, but we'll turn that on. It says that everything that I've got here suggests to me it's ready to go. All I have to do is click Start, and now, the virtual box will load up and I will have access to the genome browser. Now when the browser box starts to run this will set up some downloading and some other types of things that have to get established. You may run through this kind of loading process 
And it will depend on if you've just loaded it, the first time loading, if there's been an update in the meantime. So this may take a little while. Wait while this runs, and then when this is complete, it will tell you that it's ready to access with a browser, and then you can start browsing around. So wait through this loading process until the command at the bottom will tell you that it's ready to go. After the virtual box is completed, it's set up, then you will see this box near the bottom that says browse the genome by entering this address in your browser and it says http 127.0.0.1 colon 1234. So your browser box is now ready to go. You take this URL to a browser and then you will be accessing the genome browser in a box on your machine so it's ready to go. And that's what I'll do next. I'll turn to a browser, we'll put that URL in, and then we'll get started. Okay, so here we are. I've got a browser going. I've put that URL into my address bar here. And this is pointing to the virtual box that's on my computer. And this, this icon here gives you the reminder that you're on the virtual box and not on the, the main browsing site. So here you are in the genome browser in a box, and you can use it just like any browser session. Click the link that says Genome Browser here. You will have access to the same types of tools that you have are used to seeing when you get to the Genome Browser on the web. I'll just click the default setting to go and show you that. Looks like any other browser. It does have the reminder though that you're on the virtual box. So keep that in mind. Here I am loading the default tracks that are available to me from the virtual box. All happening locally to me. So, looks like the browser you're used to. Here you go. Now there are a couple of differences though. One of the things is if you go to the table browser here, you will have access to the table browser, but because of the way the virtual box works, there are some features that are a little bit different. From here you won't be able to send a query over to Galaxy. This is something that I'm used to doing on the web. So here we are on the virtual box, the table browser in the virtual box. So you'll see here you don't have the option to send to other tools. And that's because of the way this is installed on your computer. It can't talk to these other tools that are out there. So there are a few differences and there are some other things that you'll, you'll get used to as you use the genome browser. The performance may vary depending on your system, of course. There may be other things that you want to tweak. You can mirror some of the tracks. If there's tracks here that that you really need that would be better for you for the work that you're doing, you can mirror those tracks, pull them in, and then you can have access to them here on your browser, and so the response time will be a little bit better. But you should be able to use the Genome Browser in a box, just like any other browser session that you've got going, and you should be able to therefore locally manage and visualize the things that you want to see that you don't want to send across the internet. So have a look at Genome Browser in a Box, get started, and I hope you enjoy browsing based on your own installation of the Genome Browser on your own computer. Thanks very much for your time.